Okay, welcome to Zaid Ibrahim podcast. Today we have a special guest, a lawyer, Magita Hardy-Morgan. Is Hi. that the name? Yes, Magita Hardy-Morgan. Magita Hardy-Morgan, yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Dato, today. Yes. Okay, she's the first lawyer to appear, well, the first lawyer to talk about practice uh, in this show. So uh, it's very uh, fortunate to have her. Now, what makes you want to be a lawyer? Oh, <laughs> funny you asked me that, Christian. Um, actually, I never wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a doctor. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted and, to be but a you didn't do too well in science. No, so I actually <laughs> got 10 A's for my SPM. Oh. But guess my one B4 was for what? No. It was for biology. Oh. And long story short, I became a lawyer. <laughs> oh. Just because you got B for biology? Yes, everything changed. So I was actually aiming for the JPA scholarship for SPM. So I didn't get anything at all, actually. So then I went for well, SPM and well, here I am today. <laughs> but no regrets. No regrets. No regrets. Sure, the best sure. thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've been in practice, I understand, for many years now. 10 years? 10 years as a qualified lawyer, mm. um, but an additional two years for when I was in between my second and third year, I worked in a law firm in okay. Penang. Okay. And then when I came back, I did my CLP while working as well. So I think if you add everything, it's probably a good 12, 13 years. Mm. And you like your work? I love it. You love it? Yes, I don't think oh. I can ever go in-house. I love the idea of going to court and arguing or strategizing. Are you a court lawyer or are you an a office lawyer? Um, I'm a litigator, so I go to court. But of course, I wouldn't say that I've been going to court every single day in a week or in a month. Mm. But I have a good fair share of cases where I go to court, and I love that. Mm. Ah, I was a lawyer too. Yes, and, I know. <laughs> and uh, But I don't like court. I don't like to go to court. Oh, why not? I don't know, because those days may be different, you know. Uh, uh, maybe I... I wasn't too good. I doubt that, Dato. <laughs> uh, I have no patience, you know. Oh, I, can, I see. Uh, I, 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 I thought I should stay in the office. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that this... Uh, okay, it's been... So, how many percent of your work is actually a corporate conveyancing and how many percent of trial work, court work? Okay, so I don't do corporate work or convincing work. Oh, but you my, don't? Okay. I don't. So my partners in my firm, they do. I only focus on litigation, both civil and criminal litigation. All right, so you are a litigator. That's good. That's good. Uh, you know, Magita, we have 22,000 lawyers in the country. It's a very high number. Yeah. Uh, not as high as Israel. Israel has 64,000 lawyers. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I don't know what they do with the lawyers. But 22,000 for an economy our size is quite a lot of lawyers. Yes, I agree. You know? But so it must be difficult. Is it challenging in your profession now? Is it tough? I think it, it is, actually. So when I speak to younger lawyers, those who are just recently graduated and all, and I realize that it's not easy getting a job these days. You know, even if you compare to where I was during my time, like 10 years ago, I think it was much easier back then as compared to now. And, you know, you have, like, people in a position where they're no longer able to go f to law firms where, which work on files which they have an interest in. You know, so you okay. have a situation where they have to give up on something which is their interest only to be able to have a job. So I know students, or, you know, now they're all first or second year allies, who've actually gone to conveyancing firms, although they have interest in litigation, mm. or they have gone to civil firms where they have interest in criminal matters. Mm. So I think you do see the effect of having a high number of... What about, uh, what about, okay, difficulty in work, choice, what about salary? Are they paid well, lawyers nowadays? I think it really depends on the firm you're talking about. Oh. So I think like for the bigger firms, you do they do have a standard scale, which is where they're remunerated quite well. But for the smaller firms, I think they have a long way to go. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I know because um, uh, I know some law firms uh, paid very, very well. I heard. This yeah. is a talk in the market. <laughs> yes. Way above market, yeah. you know. Uh, but I'm sure that's an exception. 
That's right. That's yeah. an exception. I'm sure the in the in the main uh, medium size firm and even the smaller ones, I think salaries are a bit low. Yes, I that's think. right. Yeah, and I heard even to do chambering is not easy nowadays. That is true. That is very very true. Why is that? So I think that. Like one of it is what Datuk pointed out, the high number of students, the high number of law graduates. I think that definitely makes a factor. The second point is I feel that a lot of people tend to, I mean, I could be making a very generalized statement, but there's a lot of expectations on what people expect from a pupil. You know, so some firms see pupils as your dispatch person, mm. your photocopier, your office admin, mm. and then they also see the person to do research for the law, prepare course papers. So when you have those kind of expectations from a pupil and the remuneration they get do not meet that expectation, then you have a situation where people find it very difficult to get a place. Mm. You know, so when they go for interviews, they're told that, oh, you need to have your own vehicle. But how many Lao graduates actually have their own transportation? Yeah. yeah, so I've actually like interviewed my own pupil asked me that question actually. Oh. So she came for the interview and she asked me, Oh, I don't have a vehicle, is that gonna be a problem? So I said, No, that shouldn't be a problem, that's completely fine. I don't expect mm. you to be my dispatch, we have someone yeah. for that. Mm. And if we were to go to court, meet me in the office and I'll happily take you along with me. But you see, the fact that she thought it was something she should point out to me during an interview means that there are a lot of people out there who have an expectation for pupils to be able to drive around. Mm. Oh, yes. And uh, what is the what is the position in you're talking about big towns, small towns, and I know we have a lot of lawyers, but is it is it mainly in the cities or or I mean do we have shortage of lawyers in the smaller places? Okay, I don't think we have a shortage of lawyers anywhere, but Having worked in Penang, so my first law firm was in Penang, and then moving to KL and to work in KL as well, I do see a difference in terms of the type of works you get, mm. the type of files you get, your remuneration, that definitely makes a huge difference. So like a while ago, Datuk mentioned that you know some firms have a higher remuneration, higher salary. So I actually know firms which, although they advertise or to, they say that, oh, we are you know first-year lawyers, you get 7,000. But in reality, when you have a lawyer moving, and I actually know a friend who went through this. He moved from Penang to Kuala Lumpur, and when they had a contract and all, they asked for his last drawn salary. So they based his current salary in KL based on his last drawn in Penang. And that's a huge difference there. Of course. Yeah, of course. so, you know, you may say that we are giving you premium salary. Oh, maybe salary. it's <laughs> just part of the promotion. Probably, but, you know, I also do think that, like, the living cost in Penang is not so cheap as well. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's time yeah. for firms in Penang to also yeah. increase the salary Penang, a bit. The traffic jam is also not good. <laughs> it's just like KL. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Penang quite often, especially during Durian. Time. Oh, okay. Uh, but I don't find it easy Isn't to... Is it Pulau? <laughs> yes, and, and also, uh, even in the mainland, mm. you know, uh, there's some good Durian there, but... Uh, uh, traffic is horrendous, it is. you know. Yeah, it uh, is. So I don't know. I thought Penang is going to have some, I don't know, super tunnel or super highway <laughs> or super what. But uh, at the moment, it's bad. Yeah, traffic you know? is bad. Okay. But I love Penang. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Being oh, a Penang born. Penang always. <laughs> Penang people always think that Penang is the best place in the if world. We do think it's still the and best. And they make the best kway <laughs> teow. They make the best curry. They make the best nasi. Basically, we say we're the best when it comes to yeah, Penang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Penang always claim they have the best. <laughs> okay, coming back to practice, uh, um, how are how are lawyers charging their clients? I'm not talking about convincing work. Mm. I know conversion work is very competitive. Yes. Sometimes they undercut. Mm. You know, they give very small, or they charge very little. But in terms of court work, how are you happy with the rates that you can command from clients nowadays? Mm. Or it depends on. It really depends on the clients themselves, actually. Okay. So it depends on the clients. It depends on the nature of the case itself. You know, if it's complex, if it's complicated, yes, we'll be able to justify why we're charging a certain amount. Okay. But it's very difficult for us to have, at least for me, it's really difficult to have a fixed rate for things. You know, I can't just say, okay, magistrate, 10 to 15, I can't do that. It really depends on who your client is, whether they're able to pay. So sometimes when you take on a brief, it's not so much about making money out of your client. It's also to build that rapport with the client. 
So it has to be something which is reasonable, something which you know that, okay, this is what my time costs. You, you, try, you try to strike a balance mm. in fees. And I hope the clients are reasonable people. Because some of them don't pay. Oh, that's a whole different issue. <laughs> that's a uh, that's from my experience. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's across the board. Yeah. Um, uh, so, okay, as long as you're careful. Yes. Uh, as long as you're careful and, and, and get your payment at yeah. the right time. Yes, usually right it's up front is the best way to get yeah. clients to pay. Yeah, but not everybody can pay up front. That's true. So, yeah. again, it goes back to your yeah. relationship with your client. Mm. And the ability to pay. I'm sorry. And the ability to yes, pay. Yes, you know, that's also a risk. Uh, you know, okay. So, there are uh, more women lawyers than men lawyers. Is that true? Uh, that's what I was I, I'm not sure. But, okay. So because in, in Singapore, it's about more male lawyers, but uh, not much more. But mm. I, I thought someone told me that there are more women lawyers here. Is that true? I really don't know. So I don't know what the statistics is like, mm. but there is something I have observed, at least based on the days when I attend court, the number of, so more often than not, you'll have your senior counsel, the lead counsel, is a male, and he will be assisted by a few female juniors. So <laughs> that is something I've noticed a trend, you know. Yeah. So that I have noticed. And there but are no, I can't say for there are fact. no Senior, senior women counsel. Oh no, they are. You have people like that, though. Ambiga and all. You do have them. Ambiga is considered very senior. Yes. Right? Who else? There's quite a lot. There's quite Prita Pillay from Screen. There oh. is Ashanti Morgan. There's a lot of them. But I don't know them. Or maybe because that they've left the profession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should promote themselves more. I, I think they are doing a good job. Yeah. If anyone should promote themselves, it's me. <laughs> okay. All right. I. I. I I I don't know maybe because I'm out of la, out of the loop. There are quite a number know? of them, yeah. and they're all amazing in court. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure, and uh, I think women lawyers are also more. Uh, how shall I say? More. Please don't say emotional. <laughs> no, no, they're not. I I find the women lawyers are more calm. Oh, calm. Okay. No, oh, when they make presentations, I notice. Is that true? Say, yeah. Okay. I thought that the male lawyers tend to be a bit more aggressive. They're a bit dramatic. Drama. Uh, <laughs> yes. Drama. Uh, yes, that's the word. I think they're more dramatic. I think women lawyers are a bit more calm, I think, uh, generally. Mm. You know? Yeah, but that's just from my uh, uh, reflection. Mm. Time passed, you know? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a short break here. Um, uh, uh, Magita, we'll continue in the next session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.